I'm not here to tell you about using ram hammers on allow crablets to make them full AFK. There are certain rocks in RuneScape that give more XP than every other rock of their tier. I refer to these rocks as the perfect stones. They're scattered all across Gilanor in some of the least likely locations, but I was lucky enough to discover them on my journey. This is Die to Zuck, my proactively named Hardcore Iron Man. Over one year ago, I started this account with the goal of achieving the lowest combat Zuck cape possible on a Hardcore account. No trading, no dying, but anything else goes. Today, we continue the journey with mining and smithing. Last episode, I mentioned that every like, sub, and comment would add GP to a pool for another insane challenge that's to come after this series. That balance is now sitting at over 103 million GP thanks to all of your support. Let's try to double it this episode. Last episode, we completed the Grand Tree Quest. I told you the goal of this quest was 30 agility for extra run energy. That was a lie. The Grand Tree Quest gave me access to a new mine that will be pivotal for me during the mining grind, but I'm not actually able to use it yet. What's so special about this mine is that it contains one of the perfect stones for level 50 mining. When you mine a rock in RuneScape, it gives you a default amount of XP based on your mining level, strength level, and pickaxe. This value doesn't change unless you mine a different type of rock. At least, that's what people think. There's a mechanic called Rock Opportunities that can change this equation. When you mine core rocks, often a nearby rock will glow gold and you can mine it for extra XP and ore progress. This is a rock opportunity, not that complicated. What people fail to consider is the time it takes to run to that rock opportunity. If you're a sweaty gamer, you can surge and dive around to get there tick perfectly, but that gets old fast and let's be honest, almost no one does that. We're AFK, we're not paying attention, we probably miss the rock opportunity for a minute. So what if you didn't have to move at all? That is exactly what we are going to do with these perfect stones. Instead of needing to move around for rock opportunities, we'll stay in exactly the same spot, so all you need to do is click a rock right next to you whenever you look back at your screen to get a big XP buff. No thinking, no guessing required. Rock opportunities spawn on a random rock within six game squares of the rock you're mining. It needs to be the same type of ore, and it needs to be a core stone, so something like adamant or rune. Almost every single mine has multiple stones squished near each other, so you'll need to jog a few squares to get that juicy XP buff. It can be very hard to see a rock opportunity, so you might forget about it for a while or completely miss it. If you are having trouble seeing rock opportunities, there's a few things you can do. The first easy fix is to go into your settings and turn particle quality to high and then bloom effects to high. If your computer can't handle that, another option is to go to your skybox filters and turn on either the dusk or nightstone filters. But what if you just don't need to find it? If you can find two rocks next to each other that are over six tiles away from every other rock of the same type, you don't need to worry about finding a rock opportunity ever again. But there's one problem. Unless you're crazy enough to mine every stone in the game, which, I mean, surely no one would be insane enough to do, right? I'm going to be mining every single mineable rock in RuneScape. You probably haven't tested out many mine locations. You just go to wherever you know, whatever's close to a bank. I was exactly the same until one year ago when a special event changed everything about early game mining. Earlier this episode, I told you I completed the Grand Tree quest to unlock a mid-level mining site, not for the agility XP. Well, that was also a lie. I actually did complete the quest for 30 agility, but not for run energy. At the same time, there was a special event going on in RuneScape, the Golden Cape Hunt, possibly one of the most broken pieces of content for brand new Ironmen. If you managed to gather 8 out of the 11 possible shards for the event, it rewarded you with a worthless golden cape and more importantly, a 28 day long buff. This buff gave a 5% chance to reduce damage taken by 99%. I did not abuse this for the challenge. And it gave you unlimited porter effects for the entire 28 days, even on an Iron Man. I abused this extremely heavily for the month, specifically for mining. 
Getting this buff was not easy. I was able to AFK at the beach to get the Gathering, Artisan, and Support shards, but that was only 3 out of the 8 shards. I still needed 5 more and I couldn't get the combat shard as I'm avoiding as much combat XP as possible. I also couldn't buy a shard for 25 million GP and I am not a premier member on this account. That means I need to get the quest, clue, and boss shards. The boss shard was actually super easy to get. All you need to do was get marks of war, so I camped Croesus for a few hours and got the shard. For the quest shard, I needed to complete the new fort quest through Unwelcome Guests. Unfortunately, a lot of my early footage here on this account actually corrupted, but I almost died while starting off the new Foundations quest. When you first enter the area, there are a bunch of zombies you need to clear, and they piled me while I was stuck on a RuneScape loading screen. Then in Murder on the Border, I had a similar situation. I nearly died to the assassin on the roof. It turns out that was actually a safe death had I died, but I didn't know that at the time, so I panic teleported out with a wicked hood. I have been consistently underestimating quests on this account. Last up is Unwelcome Guest. This quest is more difficult than the first two because I need to defeat 20 fetid zombies and tank them while building enforcements. These are not scalable enemies and they have a max hit of nearly 500 and multiple can attack you at the same time. I am too hittable if I'm not careful here. Alright, I've got a full inventory of salmon, kind of like a grizzly bear here, just packing from the river. These zombies honestly don't stand a chance. As long as I stay mostly out of melee range, I think I am fine. Yeah, perfect. See, as long as I'm not sloppy, we should be good. I'll just keep pulling them from a distance, kill them one by one, and make my way through. Alright, there we go. That is the zombies defeated. An added bonus of this quest is that I unlock Armored Phantoms and Risen Ghosts. Obviously, I can't defeat them right now, but later on, they're a possible option to get an important magic upgrade. I do not have high enough level equipment to safely make it to Jad. I need to be able to kill minions quickly so damage doesn't build up, especially if a safe spot fails. That's why we're doing mining in the first place, and that brings me back to the last shard I need, the Clue Shard. Clues have multiple rewards that can help my account prepare for Jad, and even more rewards that will be absolutely essential when I'm ready for Zuck. Right now, I'd like to get a Mystic Staff and possibly some Amulets. Unfortunately, I cannot get the Staff from Easy or Medium Clues. That means I need to do Hard Clues, but they're very slow for me to obtain without training combat. Luckily, the 2023 Beach Event was still going on. It was confirmed that Sandy Clues from the beach would give shards for the Golden Cape Hunt. That means I can get 30 clues for free, and their drop table includes Mystic Staffs. Back in 2023, beach clues gave hints that were not on the beach. For example, digging by the Gnome Glider on Crash Island. Basically, anywhere in the game that was sand. You could work around this by destroying Sandy Clues that were not on the beach and getting another from Rhea. I did not know this. And then in 2024, Jagex completely changed Sandy Clues and just removed any stuff that was not on the beach. I am going to use a little teleport hack that's really handy for new accounts. I'll group up with my main to fight the Calphite King and then ready up. That will bring me into the desert without any desert lodestone unlocked. This clue requires me to get into Sophonim, so I'll need to unlock a few quests. Thurgo is up next, and that is it, our first Sandy Clue finished. This next clue requires me to steal the top of the Agility Pyramid. I'm going to quickly finish off Tree Gnome Village and then do the Grand Tree to unlock the Tree Network and get 30 Agility. I should be able to safe spot this boss if I'm not mistaken. I only need to kill the Warlord so I can ignore the other two chaps and just focus on him. And would you look at that, we got his orbs. Nice. 
right, awesome. We get 28 attack from this quest without needing to do any combat. That is big because early game monsters I train on to level up don't drop anything useful and give me unnecessary hit points to XP. So this is why we actually finished the Grand Tree. 30 agility for the top of the pyramid. I need to admit something, I spent the last 15 minutes trying to get to the top of the pyramid without consulting the Wikipedia first. It turns out the more weight on your character, the more likely you are to fail an obstacle. I weighed so much that it was statistically impossible for me to complete the pyramid and I was completely wasting my time. Let's snag the hard earned top and get out of here. I'm so dumb. Okay. Well, okay then, never mind. I finished all of the clues and did not manage to get the shard, but let's check out the loot. We're hoping for a mystic staff to upgrade our magic weapon down the line. All right, an amulet of power, that's great. That's big right now. It's worse than a style specific amulet, but if I'm tribriding, I can't complain there. Sweet, there's an air battle staff. That's huge right now. It's not a mystic staff, but I'll absolutely take it. I need it early on. And we got some biscuits. Perfect. These will also be helpful during Jad. I opened every single clue and did not get a single mystic staff. Either the wiki's wrong, I'm very unlucky, or you need at least 40 magic to unlock the drop. There are a number of drop tables in the game that are dependent on your levels, so maybe that's the case with Sandy Clues. I only have one day left to get the clue shard, and we just discovered that the shard was actually bugged when I did all of my clue steps. It was impossible to obtain and I don't have enough time to finish it off. Luckily, the Reddit and Twitter crews came out strong and Jagex brought the event back for an extra week. I don't have Sandy Clues anymore, but I can farm Easy Clues from ham members to quickly get this shard. The downside with Easy Clues is I can't do a lot of steps that require me to equip gear that you'd need defense levels for. This will be a very long grind. This step has to be up there with my least favorite. You need to run so far to get to Galahad's house. It is an iconic run though, not gonna lie. Beautiful, that's a casket. Oh no way, you got the same clue again? That's so good, man. No way! Yes, that's the shard. Let's go, we are done with easy clues. Let's get the cape buff. Oh my goodness, I'm, yes, that is so good. That is so good. Unlimited porters are huge. We can finally start mining. I need to level smithing and mining together in order to get pickaxe upgrades along the way and create gear. The reason we're training mining is to get some weapons that will help out at Jad, and then later down the line unlock invention with 80 smithing. The trick with mining is to complete the dig site quest and skip the first 30 levels. Likewise, finish the knight's sword to skip up to 30 smithing. That allows me to make a mithril pickaxe and begin the perfect stone grind. I have found exactly six perfect stone locations in all of RuneScape. These are rocks that are right next to each other and always pass a rock opportunity back and forth without sending it to another stone. The first perfect stone we're going to go for is the Mithril Perfect Stone. It's located in the basement of the Grand Tree. These are the only two Mithril rocks that work. You'll see how they're far enough away from the other rocks that the rock opportunity stays in place no matter what I do. I'm going to camp out here until I get enough to get up to level 40 mining. Now at level 40 mining, we're heading to East Varrock Mine for the perfect adamant stones. I could not find a perfect coal or luminite stone, but maybe someone can correct me and find one in the comments. The adamant location is great even if you don't have unlimited porters because it's right by the archaeology book teleport, which also has a bank if you don't have war's retreat yet. This is slightly faster than using the lodestone network and running. At level 50, we're going to head back to the Grand Tree Mine, this time for Runite. There are two rocks in the southwest corner that are perfect stones. I spent a lot of time here because I may want rune arrowheads in the future to train fletching depending on how much GP I have. With the fletching rework coming up, I'm concerned that the stack of arrowheads I made may become completely worthless soon, but it was a good plan a year ago. Finally, we are at level 60 mining and it's time to find the next two perfect stones. This episode, we will be mispronouncing Dracolith and Orichalcum Ore, which is what we're going to use for 60 to 70 mining and smithing. None of the easy to reach ore locations had perfect stones for this, so I had to look elsewhere. 
enter Anachronia. There is a remote mine in the very northeast corner of Anachronia that has a collection of both ore that I need. There's one problem. The mine is guarded by dinosaurs, and they can one-hit me if I make a mistake. I still get attacked by the King Scorpion in the Dwarven Mine because my combat is so low. I looked into their aggression, and it turns out I won't get attacked unless I click on them first, which I can disable. We should be good. The Dracolith Perfect Stone is a little bit different than all the others. We'll use the two rocks in the southwest corner of the mine, but we'll only mine one of them. If you mine the West Rock, it can send a rock opportunity to the Dracolith Stone north of us. However, the southernmost rock will only ever send a rock opportunity to the rock next to us. What we'll do is click on the Dracolith Rock to our west when a rock opportunity spawns, and then click back onto the south rock to continue AFK mining. That way, we never need to run out of the spot. The Aura Calcite Rock is more straightforward, just like the other perfect stones, the two rocks in the northeast corner can be swapped between without issue and always send a rock opportunity back and forth. A level 60 sword should be more than enough for pre jad waves so I can stop mining for now. I did look into perfect stones for every other rock in the game so you have all that information. Unfortunately, everything after Aura Calcum does not have a perfect stone. There is one exception, the new Primal Ores have exactly one perfect stone available. There are two Bathus rocks in the southeast of Daemonheim that are all alone. If you mine them normally, your character will run back and forth between them, but if you actively choose to walk in the middle of the rocks, you can mine them like the other perfect stones. I did not find any other perfect stones for the primal ores. Alright, that is enough mining for me today, it's time to focus on Jad. I'm getting closer, but there is still one essential quest I need to complete before I can take him on without prayer and poison. The succession quest unlocks the dive ability for me. There's one big problem. I need to slay 144 demons in the wilderness to begin the quest. That is a lot of hit points XP and a lot of risk for my low level account. I believe there is one demon in particular who is perfect for this mission. When I began this account, necromancy was not in the game. That has since changed. I will not be killing everything with necromancy, but I told you there was certain tech that no one has tried at JAD before. Next episode, we unlock it. Undyed to Zuck.